Welcome to this lesson. Today we're going to have something of an orientation for the Virtual Crash 3 software product. We'll review some of its basic functionality, uh, some of the tools that come built in, and you'll get to see the overall workflow and function of the Virtual Crash 3 system. Here you have the basic view at startup of the Virtual Crash 3 software. And of course you have uh, basic menu commands, file, open, new project, save. You can import image files and uh, some 3D models. Basic editing tools. You can group uh, individual objects together. You can create multiple layers as you could with uh, any uh, 3D modeling or CAD tool. You can create different shapes and there are uh, different uh, desktop layout modes uh, or view modes and there are features to graph results and view reports just like you would expect and there's an ex it is a very neat feature of the virtual crash 3 system and that is that you can access the help files and it'll take over your desktop and show you how to accomplish various tasks that you're interested in learning about. Here we have uh, icons up top to give you quick access to these various features. Let's first look at our viewing options. It starts off with a simple view but you can have a two pane view or three or even four and let's just quickly draw an object or a vehicle and here we see simultaneously four views and this can be very helpful to fine-tune your diagram or simulation and for each of the individual panes you can set the uh, rendering type to be uh, different for each one so here you can view the top-down view as a flat shaded or smooth shaded with texture, smooth and textured. And then of course there's the high definition rendering options where you can look at a single frame rendered in high definition output, high quality to get a quick preview of what the output might look like for a single frame for the full animated AVI file output. And here we see our AC Cobra rendered and the high quality output where ray tracing effects are turned on. You'll see objects reflecting off of the, uh, the surface and so forth. And again, you can you can set the uh, render type separately for each of the panes. For now, we'll just go back to the simple view. Now, of course, Virtual Crash 3 is first and foremost a physics simulation tool. And it's a simulation tool that happens to be able to simulate nicely uh, motor vehicle collisions and vehicle dynamics. The vehicles themselves of course are polygon mesh shells that sit atop a suspension model that's connected to wheels and the wheels have their own uh, tire force models that are applied and these are tunable by the user. And of course there's a collision force model that uses rigid body dynamics to calculate and simulate what happens in the event of a collision between two objects, whether they be vehicles or are vehicles and other objects such as primitive geometrical shapes like cubes and spheres. You can collide those two. Let's go ahead and look at some of the primitive geometrical objects that you can draw on your scene. Here we have a sphere, a box shape, it's that easy to draw them. A 
cone, the cylinder, and the ellipsoids. And right now, these simple shapes would not participate in the physics simulator. And you would see my car going straight through them. But what, one of the things that makes Virtual Crash unique is the ability to allow these shapes to participate in the physics simulation. So I can select my cube, let me change my cube's colors using the uh, right click fast access of the properties dialog. And all these properties, you can quickly access them using the right click. Or you can go over here to the left side control panel and access the very same properties and more for the same object that I've selected. And here I could select the position and the orientation. But what I want to do now is make this cube a rigid body object. And for that I would go to Create, Physics, and Make Rigid Body from Selection. And now the cube has physical properties such as mass, moment of inertia, and so forth. Um, and there's a defined coefficient of restitution and friction for the interaction with the cube and any of the other objects such as the vehicle. And now we can see our car hitting the cube and pushing it aside. Of course we can increase our vehicle speed to make something uh, more interesting happen. And there it goes. And of course the collisions themselves are determined by the rigid body dynamics model and the virtual crash system. Let's turn this one also into a rigid body and we can even stack him up on top of the other one. Well, let's look at him free fall. There he goes, free falling on top of the uh, co AC Cobra. But we can also stack them on top of the other box. There he goes. You can also adjust the playback speed. So if you're interested in focusing on the details of the uh, overall dynamics, you can watch the simulation playback at one half speed or one quarter speed, one eighth or one sixteenth speed. And you can render a high definition, high quality output at those speeds as well. So those are our 3D primitive geometrical shapes in the Virtual Crash 3 system. They can be stacked or arranged, connected together with uh, joints, spherical joints, hinge joints, universal joints, ragdoll or slider joints to make more complicated objects. For example, I'll connect this box to the one beneath it. And now you can see them falling over together and moving, one moving with respect to the other, only as allowed by the spherical joint connection. And you can create more complicated objects with those primitive geometrical shapes and joints. Now Virtual Crash has uh, CAD features. You can draw road objects and make complicated road configurations. You can draw 
intersections complicated intersections with multiple roads whatever you need filled circles unfilled circles filled rectangles unfilled rectangles random polygon shapes that are filled and unfilled and curves and arcs and of course there are distance measuring tools another interesting feature is the ability to put coordinate axes into your scene that's quite nice so you have three-dimensional primitive shapes you have two-dimensional shapes that will allow you to draw on the scene you can set textures of the two-dimensional shapes like so and of course you can modify the properties of the shape on the fly using the quick controls with the right click or using the control panel on the left Another interesting feature about these 2D shapes is that they can be used as friction zones and you can have an arbitrary number of friction zones in Virtual Crash. Let's set up an example of that. Here I'm going to force the car into a, a lateral motion. And right now the uh, lateral tire forces from the tire force model cause it to slide to stop. And we can create a friction zone from this primitive 2D shape, the circle, by selecting it and going to create physics, add friction to shape. And now the shape has a physics property called friction, which we can increase the value of and the effect of that will be to increase the uh, lateral tire forces in this simulation and not surprising the torque increased torque on the uh, at the contact patches of the tires causes a rollover and of course if we just had the car braking it would increase the effective drag during the braking maneuver across that uh, friction surface our friction zone and you can have a, any number of those friction zones as you'd like for your simulation now in the virtual crash system we can simulate as many vehicles as we want simultaneously and as soon as you put them into the environment they'll act as rigid bodies so you can just drag them in and immediately have collisions between them so you can see the AC is a <laughs> colliding with the Bentley we could change the colors of these guys using the quick menu right click
Now another neat feature of the virtual crash system are these fast control icons that pop up when you select a vehicle using the select move and manipulate cursor and that will allow you to uh, control not only the vehicle speed but braking or acceleration and steering input and you can do that on the fly within the 3D environment and see the effect of the input right away without having to go to a table a steering table or braking table. Now when you use these icons that updates the value in the, sequ the table that keeps track of the, the sequence of events and you can go to that sequence table and modify the values there if you'd like or you can modify them on the fly using these very handy icons and this uh, very innovative vehicle control. So if I wanted to make the AC break starting right here, I could just use the slider and have them start breaking right at that point. There it is. Now if we go to the vehicle properties in the left column, and go to sequences we see programmed in four events and each of those events will correspond to the inputs that were determined by how I set these icons and you can see to the left that the steering angle is changing as I'm sweeping the icon around within the scene so the user has the option to fine-tune and precisely dictate what the values are for steering and braking or you can simply use the icon. It's a very unique feature and you can do it simultaneously for both vehicles. So suppose I have a T-bone collision here I can use control and select the second vehicle at the same time. I can turn up the speed of my Bentley using the icon and I can see quickly what the simulation does with the current state and I can change those inputs and see how it affects the final trajectories of both vehicles and this obviously allows me to fine-tune my simulation results depending on what my needs are or I can use the right click fast control panel And of course, one of the things that sets Virtual Crash apart is its pedestrian impact model. Uh, the pedestrian model is a series of ellipsoids connected by joints. And these participate in the physics simulator, just like the primitive shapes do. and you can use this to quickly generate a pedestrian impact case simulation And you can put the 
the model, the human model, on top of motorcycles, on top of bicycles. You can pose him by using the quick poses that are given in the left hand control panel. You can even put him inside vehicles and do basic occupant kinematic studies. We can put him on top of this box. There he goes, free falling on top of the box. And then he slumps over. Now we're launching the box up into the air and lofting the poor guy. That does not look pleasant. And of course we can crash the car into both objects. And the objects will interact as determined by Newton's laws. We can even loft the car up into the air. And there they go. There are also 3D modeling options and features in the virtual crash system. You can, for example, modify the the polygon shapes of vehicles. You can distort the vehicles as needed for your case. There, I've just de randomly deformed this Bentley. You can do that to the polygon surfaces or you can do that to the vertices. Using the same method, you can create your own terrains. Let's create a plane. Let's make this a unyielding terrain. And there we see the car jumping the plane. Now if we undo that, after we drew the plane, we could have converted it into a mesh. And we could have visualized the mesh like so.
and gotten access to its uh, vertices this way. And now we can deform the mesh shape. And this is another way of modeling your particular terrain. And you can only you can allow or restrict the uh, controls to only move along single axes, and that helps to more precisely model your surface. Now again, let's turn this into a uh, immovable terrain. And we can see that the, the simulator has immediately updated the, the path that the Bentley is taking. And of course, there are other objects in our library of shapes that we can get access to. There are motorcycles. There's a beautiful V-Rod model. And their trucks. There are some barrier types. There are signs and traffic signal lights, trees, and bushes. And other objects, a couple of animals. So there it is, Virtual Crash, a physics simulator. You can use it to study collisions, vehicle dynamics. It has CAD features, 3D modeling features. You can diagram with it, make crash diagrams that are beautifully rendered. You can uh, make animations. Thanks for watching.